Hey everybody, it's uh, Genetic Beast here, and I want to do a video on uh, fake coaches, <laughs> like uh, Jason Blaha, Strength and Fitness today, and his fake coaching skills. Yes, so we're gonna review his video on uh, fake coaching. Novice lifters do well on lower reps only. Okay. Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and today I want to chat with you guys a little bit about something that um, I do as a coach personally, uh, and it's something I run into a lot of issues with when I have new clients that come on, and that's because most people have figured out, uh, again, that from successful novice programs going back well over a decade, right, what were the successful novice programs even when I started putting out content online in 2012? You know, strong lift, starting strength, all those things. And then, of course, I made a very popular programs to make you do things, just to make you do exercise. See, building muscle isn't really based on exercising. <laughs> There's a lot of people that love to come and exercise in the gym. They want to get good at lifting these weights, but in the back of their mind, they do want to build muscle, but exercise doesn't build the muscle. See what I mean? They have everything misconstrued, but of course, these fake coaches like him are going to convince you you're going to build the muscle in the gym, and you are going to build the muscle in the gym. That kind of muscle is going to be fake muscles. That's why they promote carbohydrate. Carbohydrates. It's like um, this video I just popped up in my community section, breakfast. That people were healthy when they ate eggs, bacon and eggs. And then this guy, this, these religious people came along and they were like, hey man, uh, too many people are healthy here with healthy sex drives. I think we need to destroy their health and their sex drive by selling them cereal and milk. <laughs> they didn't even know that corn was used to fatten up pigs. Yeah, man, they'd sell you cornflakes. Stuff is nasty. It's just the same as eating sugar. It's, it, it turns to glucose. So what's the difference between eating a half a bowl of sugar and a half a bowl of cereal. Well, it's the same thing, sugar. You're eating sugar, really. You're just destroying yourself slowly over time. Successful program that tens of thousands of- In other words, these programs are used to destroy your body by exercising and your longevity. See what I mean? Yeah. I think people need to read about metabolic rate, what that means, basal metabolic rate. There's low metabolic rate, and then there's high metabolic rate, which is associated with mortality. People ran, it got published and everything. It kind of put me on, on the radar a little bit. When I put out Ice Cream Fitness, which was basically uh, just a... He put out Ice Cream Fitness. Again, these things, they don't exist in nature. He created, it's fake. Me, it's meaningless, it means nothing. It isn't based on any scientific, uh, how should I put it, output or um, observations. He just simply fabricated something just to make you do something. And people are stupid. They'll pay for that to make themselves do something which is worthless. A redo, revamping of like strong lifts, but with uh, some arm work and stuff thrown in, changing the progression a little bit. I felt like some fine tuning that the, that the idea needed. Bro, 99% of the people that work out in gyms haven't a clue what they're shooting for. They're all like, well, I'm doing hypertrophy. Yeah, but hypertrophy has many meanings. There's many different ways of getting hypertrophy. There's artificial and then there's real ways of getting it. The, the question is, what are you doing? Oh, but I'm working so hard. The best is when people say, all oh, these steroid people, they're taking steroids, but they're working so hard. They're not working hard at all. They're, they're not doing anything. They're doing the exact same thing that they did before. The only difference now is they got a cosmetic look. They got the look that they were, in the fantasy in their mind, this look that they had this image in their head, what they want to look like. And so they took a drug to temporarily create that cosmetic look. The best is when people say they're fake natties. Well, yeah, if you put cosmetics on your face, you're fake, right? If you take cosmetics, you're fake. So yeah, it's temporary. It isn't it gonna carry on to something when you stop taking those drugs. It goes away because it's fake. And steroids don't build muscle, protein does. That's what sets the bar so high to build muscle. 
you need money to build muscle and they know you don't have money to afford to eat that much protein i'm i'm serious look man let's say a pack of eggs costs five dollars in the store large eggs okay and you're a young person now you really need to eat at least a good i don't know four packs of those a day that's twenty dollars right there okay um let's see plus you need some other types of protein because you need some meat some chicken some solid stuff not just eggs but that helps and so you need to eat all that throughout the day yeah the meat may cost you i don't know could cost you 10 maybe you'd, maybe you'd spend another 20 dollars on meat and let's say you use the cheap source like eggs see what i mean or just let's say you used half eggs and half meat i don't know you ate two packs of eggs and the rest is meat. Meat's expensive these days, especially beef. The good stuff. Yeah, it could be very costly. A steak could be like 20 bucks or more. So you're going to eat, what, two, three steaks a day? You're going to spend $30, $40 a day? This is what I'm trying to explain. That there is a, there is a cheaper way that you can eat these eggs. But these eggs are not so nutrient dense. And that is the problem why you have to eat more of them to compensate for their lack of nutrient. But again, like I said, to build your body, it costs money. And so people take shortcuts. They take a steroid and they continue in their same behavior. And they're like, but I, I got a transformation. I got, I got results. You didn't get results before in the gym. What made you get results now? Well, I took a drug, a magic pill. I took the magic beans. I ate these magic beans. I took this magic injection. And look, voila, it gave me this body. But then when they go off the drug, wow, the depression starts, you know, they have so many problems coping. They'll never be the same person again. Here's the thing. The moment you take a drug and that drug wears off or you stop taking it or whatever, there's so, such heavy withdrawal after from it. You'll never be the same person ever again because you keep fantasizing about, oh, man, I had this body of my dreams and everything, but it went away because it was fake to begin with. It was never yours. You never built that body. You understand me? It was never built. So I'm trying to explain that people ask me, how did you build your body? I tell them the truth. Money built my body. I never lied to anybody. Money built my body. Without money, I couldn't have built my body. That's why I took the time out when I had the money, the time, the time and the money to build my body. That's when I discovered that success is a short run. You can build the body that you truly want in such a short period of, it's, in a, it's done in a short period of time. Yeah. See what I mean? But if you don't have money, but you have like a little bit of money, you'll go buy some drugs and... You'll do it the cheap way, the shitty way. Yeah. Yeah, that's about it. And again, you will pay the consequences because eventually all these people stop doing these drugs or whatever they're doing and they can never return to normal. They're never, they'll never be normal again. They're coping constantly. Uh, then with additional accessory work in and tons and tons of, of young men and young women got phenomenal gains from it. And, and because of that mindset... The best is, so he sold this uh, ice cream fitness and he's claiming that all these young people got phenomenal gains from it. How can you get any gains off a fucking program that makes you do something like lift boxes or do stupid exercise? stupid movements a stupid movement isn't going to build your body you have to be retarded to believe that a lot of people get stuck in their heads i think particularly because of starting strength models and things that um you know that everyone can just keep pounding all those sets across a set of five strength models the reason why they got you lifting a heavy weight because they know you can't afford to build your body so they want to pretend and make you think you're weak and that you need, need to lift a heavy weight. You, you aren't weak, you're actually strong when you're young, but the food you're eating is making you weak because you can't afford to eat good food, so you eat shit. So they got you coming into the gym, lifting a heavy weight. What are you gaining there? Nothing, it's imaginary weight. It's like the woman who picked up the car off a kid. She got an influx of this adrenaline 
The adrenaline gave her the strength to pick to lift a car, a 6,000 pound car, off her child to save his life. This is the same thing you're doing in the gym. It's temporary. It's kind of like, I don't know, it's, it's a lifting strength, like an ant. He could lift 10 times his weight, but when you come around, you're bigger. So you just step on him and he's dead. I've been heavy work forever and that it's going to work. And that's just, that's simply not. In other not words, it doesn't matter you as a little guy. It will never matter how strong you get with your lifts. No big guy has ever moved for a little guy in the street. Ever. Ever. And he doesn't give a shit about how much you can lift, but he, he can't see what you can lift. But you sure can't see how big that guy is when he's walking in the street. Understand me, man? So you're a delusional, fantasizing. True. And the thing is, as we get more advanced, we have to do, in my experience, my observation as a coach, and it doesn't matter whether your goals are strength or building muscle, right? It does almost doesn't matter here because, honestly, uh, if you're not using gear, you're going to have to just... This guy is coping. He has to mention gear all the time because he's coping. You're watching somebody with a mental illness lifting weights. You understand me? You, you, if you can't really see that, the people on his channel that comment, the minions that comment on here, they're crazy too, just like Jason Blaha. They're just as sick as him because they're all coping doing this. This is a cope. See what I mean? Everybody knows that being physically bigger and stronger is the major goal so that that weight feels lighter. Why do you think most of the weight when you lift, you come in the gym, you already have muscle on your body. You were born with it. When you come into the gym, you're able to lift relatively somewhat some heavy weight, not heavier if you don't keep practicing at it or gain muscle for it to be lighter or whatever, vice versa. Yeah, it's the whole point. Now that you have some muscle you were born with, you want more of it because in your mind you think, well, I need to get stronger. Why? Because you want to compete with people in the street. You want to be stronger than them. You'll never be stronger than a guy that is bigger than you. It's really simple, man. Overlap the two no matter what. You're going to have to, to have an enormous overlap between those two things and your training is going to need to adjust accordingly. But... When you're starting out, you have so much untapped neural drive. Look at this repetitive hell. <laughs> right? Novices aren't just under muscle. They don't have neuromuscular efficiency. They just don't know how to strain yet. Right? Think about how many people out there hurt themselves straining. Yes. Doing day to day. We don't know how to strain ourselves. We want to strain ourselves and, you know... Uh, we want to wear ourselves out and fucking, you know, destroy ourselves. They got nothing better to do all day, man. Yeah. I don't have a life, man. Just lifting in my garage all day. There's nothing out there for me. There's no women, nothing for me to do because I was born genetically ugly. <laughs> so I have to lift in repetitive hell now to punish myself because I have to punish myself for being born this way because nobody wants me. Women don't, women shun me. I have nothing to nothing going on in my life other than destroying myself in my garage, lifting a heavy weight, yes. They stuff all these hernias, pulls everything. They're way more common than people who work out have even from, from lifting really heavy weights in the gym. Right? You know, people have this idea. That's why people hernias and pulls. Wow, it sounds like a very healthy sport to me, doesn't it? They're getting all these injuries, hernias and pulls. They gotta take steroids. We gotta take all these powders and proteins and shit. Everything that is counterintuitive to health is actually destroying your health even more. Isn't that crazy? Lifting heavy weight, destroying your joints, your body, accelerated aging, fucking, you know what I mean? Taking all these powders and things, injections of drugs. Wow, this is a healthy spore. Yes, I got to take creatine. It's very healthy to destroy my liver because I want to look fake good, fake good by taking creatine and some other bullshit stuff. I think insane. lifting heavy is automatically dangerous. Because untrained people get... Lifting heavy is automatically dangerous. It is. It is dangerous. What are you talking about? Trains all the time when they go and pull on something hard. 
But once you're trained... Train, pull, get hard, yeah. Because they're not focused on getting ultra-structurally stronger, like a bridge. And to lift heavy and you learn proper form, you learn how to brace, you learn how to position yourself, wedge in, uh, you know, how to make the most of things from from advantageous position. And on my old channel, I had fucking these people, they were powerlifting. They went to a meet and the guy like literally fell on his knees and blew out his knees and had to go for surgery at such a young age because he stuck some heavy, crazy weight on his back. He thought he could do it. He, he was, he never could do it. And then he just blew out his knees. Yeah, that's, that's the goal to blow up my knees, get surgery and be crippled the rest of my life. Yes. This is the goal to destroy my body by lifting something stupidly heavy instead of getting bigger and stronger and that weight feeling lighter. Oh, okay. It actually doesn't really happen that often, right? Because you've conditioned oh, yourself but, to- But T, that costs, that costs money to get bigger and stronger and do it real is really difficult. The bar, it's too hard. I'd rather put in the work, take a drug or creatine because I'm putting in the work. Yeah, I put in the work. I'm working hard at creating a fake body. I'm eating a lot of carbohydrates. I'm getting the pump, you know, the pump, the pump. Like uh, Sam Sulik keeps saying in his car, I'm after that pump. I got to get the pump, man. The more of the pump, the better. Yeah, the pump, bro. Do it, and you're not just suddenly exerting against some. You know what penis pumps do? They call that a pump too. They call it penis pump. You know what it does? It sucks all the blood and everything into that area and the penis, and it swells it. Yeah, but it's temporary. It may last for quite a while, but... It's temporary and then it goes away and then you're like shit i wish my dick was that size so unfortunately it won't be uh, it'll go away just like everything weight you've never used before we, we are gradually adding weight this is what he's doing he's consistently pumping this weight to cause a swelling effect in his muscles called inflammation yeah it's inflammatory response bro you can tell he doesn't even eat that much carbs you know, most of the time, even with our novices on, on... Because he can't afford to eat that much. That's why he can't build his body. And here's the thing. You're getting older. So <laughs> it's kind of working in reverse now. You're no longer growing. You stop growing at the age of 25. You're not really growing. But you want to build muscle. Okay. But as you, as you turn 30, it's all downhill now. So you're still skating uphill. It's just crazy. Look, you're 30 years old. Your body now is losing mass at a relatively, I don't know, slow to fast rate. So you're losing muscle. So if at 30 you start, you start losing muscle mass and you go to the gym to what? You're either preserve it, you're trying to keep it, preserve it, or I don't know, you're trying to get more of it. So you're actually really skating uphill most of the time. See what I mean? Yeah. The mass of that muscle. I'm talking about the mass, just the mass of it. You know, is this is crazy. That's why it's better to get more muscle as opposed to just massing up the fibers, which is a lot more. The bar is a lot higher. It's a lot more difficult, but it the but the reward is higher. You understand me? The reward of it, of building more muscle through ultra structural muscle injuries, it's a lot higher. It's there's value there. There isn't any value in just massing up the fiber. Basic barbell programs, you're probably not lifting five. And it will reach a do domain limit anyways. That's why you're skating uphill. It reaches a ceiling limit during hypertrophic process. So pff, it's not gonna get anymore. It doesn't matter how much protein you eat. Sounds more at any given point than you've ever previously lifted, right? In other words, think about it. Why do these so-called people that call, they make up a name, they call themselves hard gainers. They all came in, they got newbie gains, and then they say, I'm a hard gainer. I can't gain any muscle. So what do they do? They do bulk diets, this, that, and everything, and it still fails. It always fails. All of them, it fails. Why? Because it reached the ceiling limit. MND size has reached the ceiling limit during hypertrophic process where the satellite cell can no longer donate any extra nuclei to that domain to support any more further muscle growth. You get it, man, and what? Because pro, because these myonuclei synthesize protein. Without them, doesn't matter how much protein you eat, you can't synthesize anymore to increase that domain. And why is that? Because you need a hyperplasia effect. That that 
fiber reached a ceiling limit. So you need to build new fibers and then they reach a ceiling limit. You understand me? That's how it works. That's what the satellite cell does. If you get more cells through hyperplasia, uh, they're going to tell you hyperplasia doesn't exist because if it doesn't exist, then you can't bypass myonuclear domain size limit, right? And so you have to rely on them with bulk diets and tablets and creatine, water, bloat muscle, sarcoplasmic hypertrophy, glycogen loading, fake muscles blowing up like balloons and stuff. The balloon method. You got to use the balloon method, the ice cream version 2.0 balloon. <laughs> Yeah. Until you've done 100 pounds for five reps, you're probably not going to touch 105. Well, you see where we're going, it makes it pretty safe. This is probably one of the most important videos you should watch and listen to what I'm telling you. But your people are so, I don't know, out to lunch that you just can't really understand. All right, because you're doing it later after you've adapted. So even if you're doing, you know, several sets of five with 100 pounds, you're not going to go up for 105 for a couple of days till you've adapted your body's uh, adapted to that so you have all that untapped neural drive no 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 your body yeah there's neural drive motor units your body adapts to the weight so you keep increasing the weight because it's now it's it kind of feels lighter because you got androgen receptors for that force production giving you maximum force production okay that type of strength <clears throat> okay, so you increase the weight, but it feels heavy, but you're pulling it anyways. So what does your body do? It compensates by giving you more androgen receptors. Yeah, that's about it. So that the molecule has somewhere to bind, giving you more force production. Plus, they respond easily, meaning it doesn't take a lot. And a proliferation of the motor units, yeah. But they can only proliferate so far. They just proliferate through the unit. Through the, through the fiber, but maximum force production is created through androgen receptor strength. Put muscle on a novice, right? They just do not need that much workload because they're so untrained, right? Their, their muscles aren't used to being used regularly and it just doesn't take a tremendous amount of work to get a response, right? So we- Of course not. If a muscle's untrained, it gets, an, it gets a quick response in the beginning. Each adaptation needs a response. Get all that neural drive from, from, you know, progressively lifting with relatively low reps. We learn basic form, learn how to brace all that stuff. All those good things. I like how he says neural drive. It's based on androgen receptors, not neural drive. Yes, yeah, neural drive, but it's androgen receptor, man. Thanks. They gain muscle because they're doing enough workload that their their muscles are not used to it once they get through the first few weeks of neural adaptation, which is really enormous. Their body will... No, when they first come in, those novices, they get an ultra-structural damage to their muscle fibers where the satellite cell donates that nuclei to support further muscle growth because it reached an MND size limit when you were 15. Yes, during hypertrophic process. So now you came in, you got an adaptation. You were able to move MND size limit by getting the progenitor to donate some of its nuclei to that domain. You can see that map in nuclei overload training. It shows you there, there's a map. It says untrained first training satellite cell fusion. What's the satellite cell fusion? It's donating its nuclei. It says they're nuclei, man. And then you see hypertrophy, but <laughs> Yeah, but it itself is not going to drive that, drive it. That's the first phase you got as a newbie gain. You still were eating too at that time. So you got some growth. I can't tell you how much growth there. I don't know how much you were eating or what you were doing. So yeah. Start laying down new muscle tissue provided sleep nutrition. See what he said, new muscle tissue. New muscle tissue, in order to build new muscle, you need new muscle tissue. <laughs> protein everything are on point it'll do it at a rapid rate as we get more advanced it be Ooh, protein and everything it will do it at a rapid rate well not so rapidly comes harder to gain muscle okay we need to create much larger inroads in metabolic fatigue
that usually requires you know, you know it becomes much harder because it reached a ceiling limit during hypertrophic process where the progenitor cell can no longer donate any extra nuclei to support further muscle growth so what do you need to do to get it to donate these nuclei to support further muscle growth see what i mean if it reached an MND size limit more total reps more total volume more total tonnage than we did as a novice that training was is not based on lifting a heavy weight yeah that's why a lot of these power lifters i've said before i'm getting a bigger but i'm not getting a stronger a stronger a strong guy i'm a, I'm a little guy and i'm not getting bigger but i got stronger at lifting you got better at lifting but you didn't get a bigger you want to know why you're not getting stronger and you got bigger because you got glycogen glycogen in the muscle it's a secondary shift because you keep eating an, an, an unnatural diet and so your body is grabbing this glucose and filling up the muscle with it because it's an energy source duh <laughs> it's going to be based on strength glucose protein is okay the downside our recovery can't always keep pace and if we just keep stacking heavier weight we just burn out our joints hurt we get beat up in other words when you only squat 200 pounds a five yeah on a little body that's not growing but you keep forcing it to lift heavier and heavier what did you expect of course you're gonna fuck up your joints your muscle your body your tendons and ligaments and everything you're gonna be messed up you can end up in a wheelchair one day by five on squats you can say you know 80 percent is smart because he doesn't lift that much anymore and i noticed his lifts have gone down because he's suffering from something called sarcopenia loss of muscle you can tell he's losing muscle he's not building muscle here he's actually losing muscle because sarcopenia you understand what i mean what sarcopenia is it starts happening already at the age of 30. so what is coach actually really doing what is the purpose behind all this and maybe even close to 85 percent of your your true max is reasonable you can handle it when you squat 500 pounds all right that's a whole different ball game we're now at okay i squat 500 pounds but when covid came around i did a lot of crazy shit and I've always been able to squat 500. I could literally come in a gym for, I, all the way through, through my 30s since I built my body. From my 30s to all the way to my 40s to 50, I could squat 500. Just easily 500. But I'm going to tell you right now, since, I, since COVID came around and I stopped and I hadn't gone to the gym so much and I've been busy and everything, I'm going to tell you that putting 500 on my back because of this, as you get older, you're losing a lot of this stuff. I could tell you it's extremely heavy. It feels extremely, extremely heavy to put 500 on my back right now. I, could, I can't even describe it. That's why I have to do isometric movements now to get my body calibrated back to handling 500. Yeah, I could just literally bounce it on my back. I can't even lift 500 off the bar. I could move 400, 300, but 500 almost seems impossible. I can't lift it all with my shoulders off the bar. Yet I could do it before. See what I mean? And I never had issues with that. I don't know what happened between COVID and now. Maybe it was just there was a lot of time off or there could have been the food I was eating and it caused me all these problems. I'm not really sure what caused it to go away see what i mean but i do know there was loss in muscle mass for sure because covid and all that time off and the things that i was eating i wasn't keeping up with it so yeah now i'm more focused on creating more of these ultra structural muscle injuries and my protein is exceeding that breakdown i'm trying right now so because i have some time and whatever what is the, the bar is very high doing that it requires a lot of work and sometimes in the back of my mind i'm trying to convince myself why am i doing this see what i mean but i know why i'm doing it two and a half times the weight for those same percentages the the pounding on your joints and the structures of your body really mount up 
when, when weight that is loaded on top. It does really mount up on your joints. And what he's doing is easy, just coming in and lifting repetitively. I could just come into a gym every day and lift repetitively and go nowhere with that and get nowhere and pretend and eat, and eat a bunch of like pizza and carbohydrates and shit. And so what? Is that healthy? Is that going to help me in any way? Fucking no, man. See, I don't want to just get better at lifting weights. I want the weights to feel light like they were before, according to the amount of muscle mass that I had on my body. Up your body is two and a half times where, where it was back then. That's just a lot more structural fatigue. It's a lot more fatigue on the joints. Okay. But I'm on, also on a pure carnivore diet. There are absolutely zero carbs in my diet. See what I mean? So, yeah, I'm doing it differently. It's different. The training, being on a carnivore diet and the things that you're doing is totally different. The feeling and what you're shooting for. And the volumes itself from an adaptative response are maybe a smaller percentage of what you need to maximize growth. He is actually creating more sarcopenia by wearing out his muscles doing this lifting. It's not... There isn't anything behind it. See what I mean? There isn't, like, what is the purpose of lifting these boxes all day without pay? I just don't get it, man. Wearing out your body and your joints. So as we get bigger and stronger, we can't just pound the head. He's not getting bigger or stronger. He's actually getting smaller. You can tell his sarcopenia. His look, his arms are skinny. His legs are skinny and his, his waist is big, it's blocky, and he's got man boobs. We work all the time because what's heavy for us, hey, it's not the same thing. In other words, our 10 rep sets, once we're big and strong, are exceeding the maxes. Okay, and our 10 rep is... Yeah, what big and strong? Big and strong by what? Glucose or proteins in the muscle? Which one? What do you mean big and strong? You can get big and you won't be strong you'll just be good at lifting something light right 10 rep is not heavy our three by ten is probably heavier than the novice in their first three months in the gym ever dreamed of lifting for a max look how strong coaches coach is super strong lifting that little weight hey look how much he can lift there fucking what is that what are those like five pounds five pound weights on each side Okay, let's say the bar is like 55, right? I don't know how much his bar weighs there. I can't tell you. So let's just say for purposes, 55 pounds. And I don't know. He's got two five-pound weights on each side. Five pounds. So what is that? 65 pounds. <laughs> He's curling 65 pounds, bro. We come in and crank out 30 reps with it in a workout, you know, with three sets. Right, you... Look, man, I can curl 80, 80 pound dumbbells, 85 pound dumbbells like there were nothing, even 100 pound dumbbells. I can curl them, literally curl them. And so what? What does that matter whether they can curl them or not? That's really nice and cu cute and fun. And again, this is really nice that he can curl like, I don't know, 65 pounds here or whatever. That's all cute and nice, but... If there's no really real true purpose behind it, other than this is sarcoplasmic training, or is this my is this ultra structural training? It's it's not. It's it's just repetitive wearing himself out training. Get it? <laughs> you're 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 an advanced lifter. You come in and do sets of ten with two twenty five on the bench, three fifteen on the squat. Hey, a novice lifter's like, dude. I I hope those are man. Blaha is really hurting, I tell you. My max is one day. Whatever. More muscle. Because, again, also the neural drive is, is uh, exceeded, right? The novice lifter, they have a lot of untapped neural drive in their muscular. What did he say here? Than anything they dreamed of doing, all right? So we've got to bring the poundages down on the bar in order to recover. And then we have to target our strength work. So if we're trying to maximize strength, we need to go. You have to bring the poundages down down to practice on strength what well how much heavy work can my body really handle and that's what i'm going to do for the neural drive and then everything else the neural drive you know people in factories when they just feel exhausted and worn out and they can't lift heavier boxes 
they usually ask for to be circulated somewhere else in, in the factory. So, but the people will circulate you anyways, knowing that. They'll put you on a smaller line for a while, then they'll put you on the heavy line, then the light line. They circulate you because they're aware of these things. You understand me? The neural drive, it'd be worn out and you'd be tired. You lose the strength and everything. You get tired, lose strength, you become weak. So then they put you on shifts to put bottles in the machine, and then they put you back on the skids to lift the boxes and put them there and do certain things, yes. I do needs to be to just get more muscle because again also the neural drive is is uh, exceeded right the novice lifter yeah you got to get more muscle but the problem is it has an mnd size limit <laughs> they have a lot of untapped neural drive in their muscular and you need money to build muscle coordination the advanced lifter doesn't two things you need you need money and you need to know how to get over mnd size limit to build muscle those two things Without those two factors, you get the zero. You'll be like everybody else, noble natties and all these people, and all they're looking for is the powders and the this and the that and whatever. And they all just look average, if anything, at best, at newbie gains. All of them are newbie gains. We are gonna make very, 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 very tiny gains there. All of our- You're gonna make tiny gains. You're not gonna make any gains after newbie gains. <laughs> Strength is gonna come from our muscle at that point. 95% of any strength that we gain is going to come from having bigger pecs. See, 95% of your strength is going to come from your muscle, but you're not building any muscles. So what are you, where's your strength coming from? Androgen receptor strength. That's what I try to tell you. <laughs> the myositic androgen receptor controls the strength. Remember that? But not the mass of the limb muscles. That's a, you can see that in PubMed. So if it is responsible for that that's what you're getting bro that's what you're building because <laughs> you're not building muscle because muscle has a myonuclear domain size limit yeah an MED size limit bigger triceps bigger quads that is that is the only way we're going to progress at a certain point so then we have to yeah, get as bigger quads no that's how we're going to progress so what happens when they get bigger through glycogen you eating this fucking herbivore diet and then what everything towards just getting bigger and we can't do as much heavy work you know i see fat people getting bigger too they eat like shit loads of pizzas and hamburgers and mcdonald's all day they get stronger too coach okay we've got to specialize a little more with what we're doing whereas in someone who's a novice just sets a five sets a six yes we have to specialize maybe throw some curls in for a little bit Guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative Girls. and lighter weights. What's this? So again, novices can do a lot more heavy work of what's relatively heavy to them. And the more advanced we get, the more we need to be using. Man, when you're young, your body can go through a lot. It can take a lot of abuse. But when it gets older, that body is really, it's just like, man, deteriorating and stuff, bro. It's going through a metamorphosis, it's changing, metabolic changes, a whole bunch of changes. Yeah, it can't take that much abuse like it did when it was younger because the repair mechanism doesn't work the same. Smaller percentages of our max and doing more volume with it and lighter weights. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative and I'll talk to you guys yes. next time. It was very informative, coach. It's a lot of weight there you're lifting, yes. Are you going to lift that, coach? I got to see this. Bam, coach lifted it. How many plates is that? I don't know. One, two, three, four, five. And some green plate, 25. So 45s. I think this was an older one he did where he actually lifted a lot. Good job, coach. You're a strong guy. All right, friends. See you in the next one. Tell what you think about that. Like, subscribe, comment down below. Helps the algorithm. Yes, novice lifters do well on lower reps only. Um, yeah, I don't know about that, man. Eventually, it reaches an MND size limit. Everything, everything has its point where it works, and then it stops working.